Hi guys, today I'm going to show you five different Kirchhoff law problems, problem examples, and I want you guys to try and solve them as well. So uh, I'll show you the circuit and I'll explain what I'm asking you to find out, and then you guys go ahead and try and solve it. We'll just pause the video, maybe try and draw the circuit and try and solve it for yourself, and then I will show you my interpretation of how I would solve these problems. Okay, so let's begin. So number one here, um, I want you to find I1, I2, and I3. So pause the video now and try and find these different currents. Okay, so here's my solution. Well, firstly, if you look at the junction at the top there, you can see I1 is going into that junction and I2 and I3 are going out. So we can state that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. And if we look at the loop on the left hand side, well we know the 12 volts, the EMF going in, must be equal to 4I1 uh, plus 12I2. If we look at the outside loop, we can see that 12 volts, the EMF from the battery, must equal 4I1 plus 8I3. Now with this information, we now know that 12I2 must equal 8I3. Now let's try and work out what's the total resistance of our circuit. Well firstly, we've got the 12 ohms and 8 ohms, although it might not appear like it, they're actually in parallel, so we can work out what their total resistance is, okay? Uh, so we can work out that the total resistance of the, the uh, 12 ohms and the 8 ohms in parallel is actually 4.8 ohms, and add that to the 4 ohms on the left, we get a total resistance in our circuit of 8.8 .8 ohms. Now we're going to apply V equals IR. So we know that 12 is equal to I1 times by 8.8. .8. So therefore, I1 is equal to 1.36 amps. Uh, we can just substitute our values for I1 into our equations at the top left-hand side. And we can find that I2 is 0 0.54 amps and I3 is 0 0.82 amps. Okay. Uh, circuit number two. So I want you to try and find out what's the current I1, what's the current I2, and then what's the voltmeter going to read as well. So pause the video now and try and have a go. Okay, so here's my solution. Well, firstly, we've got those three 30 ohm resistors. They're all in parallel, so why don't we try and work out what the total resistance is. And we find that the total resistance is going to be 30 divided by 3, which is 10 ohms. Uh, then we're going to apply V equals IR. Now, we know we've got 9 volts going into our circuit. We want to find that current I1, and then what's the total resistance? Well, we just worked out that those 30, those 3 30 ohm resistors all in parallel is equal to 10 plus the 5 ohms, so I can add those all up together and I'm going to find the total resistance is 15 uh, ohms. So 9 divided by 15 is going to give me my current I1, which is 0 0.6 amps. Okay, now I can work out what V is going to be because if I just know if I've got 0 0.6 amps going through that 5 ohm resistor, I can just apply V equals IR. So I know it's 3 ohms, sorry, 3 volts across my 5 ohm resistor. Therefore, we must also have uh, 6 volts across the 30 ohm resistors. Why? Because we've got 9 minus 3 is going to equal to 6. Now we know V over R equals I. So 6 divided by 30 is 0 0.2. So in that very top resistor, I know I've got 0 0.2 amps going through it. So if I know I've got 0 0.2 amps going through that top resistor, and we know the total current going into the junction there is 0 0.6 amps, then the current going down is going to be 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2, which is going to be 0 0.4 amps. Okay, number three, uh, I want you to try and find I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5. So try and draw the circuit and uh, see if you can solve this problem. Okay, here's my solution. Well, firstly, we know uh, that 10 ohm resistor that I, the current I2 is going through, well, that's going to have 
10 volts across it because all our resistors except for the 25 and the 5 are in parallel the 25 and the 5 are in series but they that whole section there is is in parallel with the rest of the uh, branches anyway uh, i2 is going to equal to 10 volts divided by 10 ohms which is going to give you one amp so now we've worked out i2 okay well what about i4 well the total resistance in that branch is 25 plus 5 which is 30 so 10 volts divided by 30 ohms is a third of an amp so that's i4 i5 well that's going to be 10 divided by 20 which is 0 0.5 amps okay and now to work out i3 well at that junction i3 is going to equal i5 plus i4 which we've both calculated them so 0 0.5 plus 0 0.33 recurring i get 0 0.83 recurring amps uh, now i1 is going to equal i2 plus i3 and we both we know what those values are which is 1 plus uh, 0 0.83 recurring and we find that i1 is 1.83 amps uh, there we go Okay, now this time, be careful because we've got two batteries, well, a, a, a set of cells which is 9 volts, and then a cell that's giving out 3 volts, but be careful of the direction. I want you to find I3 and I2, and then find me I1 as well. Okay, here comes the solution. Okay, so the total EMF is... It's not 9 plus 3, it's 9 minus 3, because uh, the 3 volts is going in the opposite direction to the 9 volts. So the total EMF into our circuit is actually 6 volts. Now, the branch with the, the two 5 ohm resistors, well, we can add those resistors up and we get 10 ohms. And now we've got 10 ohms going one way, 10 ohms and the, uh, with the current going the other direction. So we can actually work out, effectively, the uh, two two sets of resistors in parallel so what we can do is we can do 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 is 2 over 10 so that total branch in the uh, in the left hand side or the the 5 ohms and the 5 ohms and the 10 ohms is actually all that resistor network there is actually equivalent to 5 ohms and then we're going to apply v equals ir well we know the total resistance now is 20 ohms plus the 5 ohms so that's going to give us uh, 25. So 6 divided by 25 is I1, which is 0 0.24 amps. Uh, we know I1 equals I2 plus I3 uh, at the junction. Uh, so we also know 10 I2 is equal to 10 I3. Therefore, I2 must equal I3. So therefore, I uh, I2 on and I3 must be half of I1. So half of I1 is 0 0.12 amps. And exactly the same for I3. Okay, number five, our final little problem. So I want you to find I1 and I2. Okay, here comes the solution. Okay, so firstly, we've got... On the left hand side we've got an 8 ohm and a 4 ohm resistor in uh, parallel so we can work out what the total resistance is there so we can say 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 is equal to 2 over 8 plus 1 over 8 which is a total of 3 over 8 we find the reciprocal of that so that's 8 over 3 and if you look the the resistor networks are actually kind of like a, uh, a, a, a mirror image of each other because we've got an 8 and a 4 ohm on the left hand side and a 4 and an 8 on the right hand side and the way they're, the way they're connected is, is the same so in fact the total resistance is not going to be 8 over 3 we can double it and that's 16 over 3 which is 5.3 recurring ohms so now we can work out well what's the current going around our circuit well that's going to be 12 divided by 5.3 ohms uh, that's going to give us I2, which is 2.25 amps. Now what we need to work out is, well, what's the current uh, for I1? Now, this time, uh, half the voltage is going to be going across the uh, 8 ohm resistor. Uh, so that's going to be 6 volts. So 6 divided by 8 is 0 0.75 amps. Uh, and then I1 is 0 0.75 amps. 
Okay, guys, I hope this has been useful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.